Hey guys, Mr. Rast here. I thought I'd start recording the lessons, and this will be the first time I've made a um, video of my lessons, so bear with me. Hopefully it'll get better in time. Um, but for now, we're going to start off with the first topic that we did in class this year, and that's data analysis. Uh, I thought I'd record them so that people that are absent can figure out what was going on in class, and people that were struggling um, can get some maybe reinforcement um, watching these videos. So let's start here data analysis, the first thing that we've talked about this year um, was kind of basic, but but follow, bear with me here. I know that you're looking at this like 2 plus 3 is 5. Is this really high school chemistry? Yes, it is, but bear with me. We know that 2 plus 3 equals 5, and right now this equation is written to solve for the 5, correct? How could I rearrange this equation to solve for the 3? Remembering your math skills from probably prior to sixth grade, you know that if you subtracted two from both sides, you could isolate the three, and now you have five minus two equal to three. Let's do it one more time. We've solved for five, we solved for three, now let's solve for two. To solve for two, we would need to subtract three from both sides. By subtracting three from both sides, we would now say that five minus three equals two. Something that will help a lot um, this year in note taking and in, in your future is taking Cornell notes. Cornell notes, you, you take your notes on the right hand side of your page and on the left side give some little hints, indicators on what was on the right hand side. This way you can fold your paper, maybe cover it uh, and not look at your notes and write something on the left hand side that would clue you in to what you wrote on the right hand side. Um, for instance, an example using um, using numbers to rewrite 2 plus 3 equals 5 for the 2 and the 3 value. If you wrote that on the left-hand side of your page and then covered the right-hand side, you could kind of review your notes without staring directly at the answers. Now let's look at the point. Why did I bring this up? Well, we knew that... Two, <laughs> let me look back. We knew that 2 plus 3 was 5. Now let's use something more abstract, a plus b equals c. It's the same thing as 2 plus 3 equals 5 um, in that we have a, a, an equation here. And so if we say a plus b equals c, we have now solved for c. And doing the same exact thing that we did with the numbers, we could rearrange this equation to solve for the b. So solving for b, we would subtract the a from both sides. So subtracting the a from both sides would isolate the b, and now we could say c minus a equals b. And now see, it's a little bit more abstract here. Um, when we use the numbers, we're like, we knew it was true because I used small numbers that was easy to deal with. But sometimes when we start in chemistry, we start using um, symbols and things like that, and people get confused. You know the basic math, but sometimes people get a little bit confused from their basic arithmetic. Finally, um, let's resolve this for A. To do that, I would subtract B from both sides. Subtracting B from both sides, we could say that A equals C minus B. Again, if I was um, going to put this in Cornell notes, which I want you guys to do this year, so that you can review your notes without staring at the answers, write something on the left-hand side that will remind you of what you took notes on the on the uh, right-hand side. So solve for a and b in the equation a plus b equals c. So you're just going to add and subtract things from sides to isolate the values that you need. Now we can do this with multiplying and dividing as well. Um, we know that 2 equals 4 divided by 8. Is that true? 4 divided by 8? I'm sorry. 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2, correct? All right. We have now solved for 2. Now, I'm going to use cross multiplication um, to slide these equations around. You'll see me do this a lot this year. And basically, what we're really doing is right here. What we're really doing um, with that, that original, let's look at this problem again, with 2 equals 4 over 8, I mean, 2 equals 8 over 4, what we're really doing here is, let me see, we're saying um, 2 equals 8 over 
four. If I'm going to, um, I'm just going to show you the math behind the cross multiplication here. If I want to get, if I want to solve for the eight, I would multiply both sides by four. The fours would cancel out. Remember, there's a little times here. The fours would cancel out, and we would be able to say that um, that was a really bad circle. So let's fix that. Okay, two times four is equal to eight. So what I'm doing is if I if I multiply both sides by four, I can cancel out that four. So let's try this again. Two equals eight over four. Let's say I want to um, move the two to the other side. So I can div divide both sides by two. So I put the two on both sides here. These twos cancel out, which would be one equals eight over four times two, which is eight. So that would be true also. So that's the math behind it that your math teachers will have taught you. That, um, But what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to take kind of shortcuts with this. Um, and this is called cross multiplication. So I just want to show you the truth behind the arithmetic. And now this is the way that I'll do it quickly. So I can move things across the equal sign as long as I go diagonally. So let's take a look here. If I take the two and the four and I move them across the equal side diagonally and I swap them, now I have the statement that four is equal to eight divided by two. That's true. Eight divided by two is four. Let's rearrange this to solve for just the four. To get the four, I'm sorry, I'm just going to move the four. If I just move the four, right, just moving the four, move the four up, then I'm stating that two times four is eight. So if you take a look at what we've done here, we have solved for two, which is equal to eight over four. We've solved for four, which is equal to eight over two, and we solve for eight, which is two times four. In Cornell notes, I might write something like cross multiply two equals eight over four to solve for the eight and the four. Now I'm going to use the same principles, in fact, the same animation to solve for D equals E over F. We knew those last, I use numbers because I don't think you argue with me that it's true with the numbers, but sometimes with the letters, people, it's a more abstract and people are like, not sure if that works or not. So same idea here. I can move things across the equal sign. So D equals E over F. I can swap the D and the F diagonally. And so EF would equal E over D. I could solve for E by just moving the F. If I move the F up here, D times F equals E. So now I've rearranged this to solve for the D, the F, and the E. And again, practicing um, Cornell notes. I'm just modeling this Cornell notes for you on this first lesson from here on out. I'm hopefully you understand it. I would uh, like you guys to do this for the rest of the year. So anyways, you would write something on the left side that uh, cross multiply D equals E divided by F to solve for the E and the F. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <baby. laughs> you know, when I showed this in class, less than half of the students knew who Austin Power was. Austin Powers. So obviously Austin Powers on here because I'm talking about powers now, but um, boy, I'm feeling old quick that people aren't familiar with Austin Powers. You got to watch the movie, kids. Okay, so anyways, dealing with powers. Um, three squared is equal to nine. So now I'm going to try to isolate values with using when we're using exponents or powers. So to isolate the value that is squared, you need to square root both sides. So follow along with me here. So if I want to, if, if I have three squared equals nine, and I want to know what does the three equal, because I, I really say nine equals three squared, I want to have three alone. If I square root both sides, that takes the square of, of the three away. By square rooting both sides, that takes see that little animation there. By taking the square root of both sides, the square of something square rooted just negates itself. So three would equal the square root of nine. Got it? Again, taking Cornell notes, you might write something like isolate the three in an equation like three squared equals nine. Okay, so this is our classwork for these concepts. Um, 
In your classwork, I'd like you to write the questions on the left side. For instance, example, T over R equals W. And what you're going to do in this classwork is solve for every value in the classwork. So for an example for this one is if T over R equals W, we've already solved for the W. How could we rearrange this to solve us for the T and the R? In other words, what does T equal? What does R equal? To do this, to solve for R, I could switch the R and the W, cross multiplying. And now I know that R equals T over W. To solve for the t, I just got to get rid of that r. So I can move the r diagonally up, and now I know that t equals w over r. So for every question, you have to solve for every value. In this question, I had three values in here, and I had to rearrange it to solve for all three. Luckily, the w was already solved. It already said w equals t over r. So what you're going to do is with these questions here, I'd like you to rearrange them to solve for every value. So when D equals E times F, what does the E equal? What does the F equal? And number two, G equals H squared. What does the H equal? Look back at good old Austin Powers. He'll help you out with that one. A minus B equals C. I want you to tell me what A equals, what B equals. When questions like number four, I've got a W, X, Y, Z. I need you to solve for all four values. So there's going to be four answers to this question. Um, just like in number six and number seven, there's going to be four answers in those questions. So review those tips that I gave you. And uh, I know it seemed very easy at first, but believe me, people get tripped up on this. So use that arithmetic wisely and good luck. Let me know if you have any questions and I'd be happy to help you guys.